Come on in. Hi, sir. Really excited to be here. So nice to meet you. Uh-huh. We're just looking over your CV. Angst, huh? What kind of surname is that? Yeah, I know. Awful. Yeah. So, Angst, what qualifies you to be our product designer? Yeah, sure. I've been doing UX, UI design for the last five years at a range of different companies, startups, scale-ups, even bigger corporate. Sure, sure. Why don't you go ahead and design something for me? Uh, sorry, what? Yeah, design something for me right now. Draw a watering can for us. Uh, sir, all due respect, product design doesn't really work like that. No? Okay, why don't you go ahead and tell me how it works then? Well, as your product designer, my responsibility is to make sure your product takes your user's needs into consideration. So I'll conduct extensive usability testing, user research, A-B testing, observe users in their natural environment. One watering can coming up. Product design interviews. They can be scary, and each one can feel completely different compared to the last one that you did. But design interviews don't actually have to be that intimidating. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Leander, and I've been a product designer based in London for the last five years. Over the course of my career, I've done hundreds of interviews. And I can tell you from personal experience that after a while, all product design interviews start to feel very similar. The key to nailing product design interviews is building a foundational understanding in all of the different potential interview stages that you might run into in any given product design interview. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. All of the different potential interview stages you might run into as a product designer and how to nail each one. Let's jump in. So typically the first stage is the recruiter screen. This is a relatively informal conversation between you and the recruiter, sometimes the hiring manager that lasts about 30 minutes and gives them an opportunity to tell you more about the role and for you to ask questions about it. Typically, this is not a conversation that focuses on your in-depth experience, but it is a chance for the recruiter to ask some baseline questions to make sure that you actually are a good fit for the role. Some of the questions you might run into during this stage are, tell me a bit about yourself. What have you been up to? What are your salary expectations? Do you need visa sponsorship? And maybe, why are you looking for a new role? So when answering the question about your experience and what you've been up to, make this interesting. Actually try to tell a story. Don't just list off your experiences one by one because that's really boring and the recruiter is probably going to fall asleep. And I really like to touch on why I became a product designer in the first place. The switch from project management to design, which allowed me to be more creative, made me feel more connected to the company and the people. And then I also like to talk about why I chose to work at the places that I've worked at previously as a product designer. I really like to work at companies where I feel like the people generally want to be there. Small startups, really fast paced, high performance environments. That makes me feel really energetic. It motivates me to go to work. And this is a good opportunity for me to explain this to the recruiter and for the recruiter to understand what drives me and also for the recruiter to feel like I actually care about my job and I wanna be there. Now, when talking about why you're looking for a new role, no matter what your circumstances are, I don't care if you got fired, I don't care if you just really want a new job or if you're bored of your current job, always answer this by talking about why you want to work for this specific company that you're talking to. Talk about why this company is exactly the thing that you're looking for, why this team is the right fit, and that is going to make a much better impression on the recruiter. These chats always zip by, and it's a really good opportunity for you to ask questions about the company too, and to genuinely find out if this is a place that you would like to work at. Now, once you pass the recruiter screen, stage two of the interview process is usually going to be a portfolio review. This is the technical round of the interview, and it's likely going to be with the hiring manager, maybe an engineer, a product manager, a few people from the team will definitely be sitting in on this one. In my experience, this round usually consists of two segments. One is always the portfolio review itself, and then the other is usually more of a formal style interview where you're asked questions about your process, how you collaborate, and we can talk about some of those questions now that you might run into. Things like, how do you collaborate with engineers? What's been the most disappointing outcome of one of your designs? Name a time you disagreed with somebody over a design decision and how you overcame that. How do you deal with negative feedback? It helps a lot to prepare answers to questions like this in advance. And there are plenty of lists on the internet about the questions that you might get asked. I'll definitely include one below in the description. So be sure to have a look at that. Let's just go over a few examples of some good answers to some of these questions and some bad answers to some of these questions. For the question, how do you collaborate with engineers? A bad answer here is any that doesn't indicate that you involve your engineers throughout the entire design process, which is something you definitely should do. And conversely, a good answer is something like, I like to involve my engineers as early in the design process as possible. That gives me an opportunity to talk about any technical challenges we might run into, share my design vision, any ideas, collaborate with the engineers because they might have some good solutions in mind as well. And it just makes it a lot easier then for us to move forward and ensure that we um, are heading in the same direction and that we don't encounter any difficulties or technical constraints down the line once I've already done all my design work. 
Let's look at one more. The question, what's been the most disappointing outcome of one of your designs? Now, a bad answer here is any that indicates that you didn't actually learn anything from your failure. That's what this question is really asking. It's, do you learn something from failure or do you kind of just take it on the chin and move forward? So a good answer here is talking about an experience that was disappointing and talking about what you learned from that experience. And bonus is if you can share a future situation that you found yourself in when you used those learnings to prevent another bad outcome. Now, the other part of this interview stage is the actual portfolio review. Now, I've done an entire video on how I would approach this. You can watch that right here if you haven't seen it already. But the TLDR here is that I would make a presentation. So I'd actually make a slide deck of one or two of my case studies that I can present during this stage of the interview. A couple of tips for this stage. Be prepared for pushback. That's really the point of these interviews. Somebody is going to want to poke holes in your process and they're going to want to find out why you did the things that you did. They weren't there, remember? And so they don't have all the context. And some of your decisions might not seem as obvious to them as they were to you. Just be ready to answer some tough questions and just justify why you did what you did. It's okay to push back on pushback. That's exactly what these people are looking for. They want to know that you were justified in making the decisions that you made. Now, the third potential stage that you might run into is my least favorite one. And you can ask any designer and they'll probably agree with me here, but that is the design challenge. Now, you're not always going to run into this stage. Some companies just don't do these. And I think they probably don't do them because they know most designers hate doing them. But the design challenge can be one of two things. So it's either going to be a take home challenge or it's going to be a whiteboarding exercise. We'll talk about the take home challenge first. This is pretty straightforward. The company is going to give you some kind of prompt, some kind of assignment. It's usually kind of related to what they do. And and you're going to have somewhere around a week to complete it. I'm just going to give you a hint. You're going to spend way more time on this than you should. And that's why take home challenges are probably the most annoying. Even though companies will tell you, oh, we don't want you to spend more than four hours. You're just going to spend more because you want to do your best. And you know, you're stacked up against other designers and everyone's going to do the same thing. The good news about take home challenges is that you really can take your time with them and you can use all the resources at your disposal. That includes the internet, your friends, maybe a mentor, and you can refine this as many times as you want to. So you can do a first draft, you can get it reviewed by somebody, you can iterate on that. And so it's really an opportunity for you to do the best possible piece of work that you can. Companies usually give take home assignments when they want a fully fledged high fidelity solution. So they want to see the UX, but they also want to see the UI. Use resources like Mobbin. I did a whole video on how to copy good UI design. You can watch that here if you haven't seen it already. And just make sure that your solution is justified, that you explain your process, and that it looks really, really good. Now, the other kind of design challenge is the whiteboarding exercise. And this one is a little bit more subtle, and it's really going to depend on on the company that you're interviewing at, how this is done. Sometimes it's done in Fig Jam online. Sometimes it's done in the office on an actual whiteboard. And the point of doing a whiteboarding exercise is twofold. The company, A, wants to see how you collaborate with others because other people will be in the room and you'll have a chance to ask them questions and involve them during the process, which you should do. And the other reason they do this is they want to see how you solve problems on the fly. So they want to see your process for how you approach solving a problem and finding a solution. You can Google UX whiteboarding challenge and you're going to find a ton of resources on how to approach these. Just a couple of tips when it comes to whiteboarding exercises. The first one is don't immediately jump into solutionizing. The team is going to give you some kind of problem to solve. If you jump straight into solutionizing, that's a big red flag for a product designer. The team want you to write down the problem statement and then they want you to gather context. They want you to understand the problem as deeply as you possibly can, ask a ton of questions, gather all of that context, and then they want you to start forming some kind of solution knowing all of those things that you now know. This is where the other part comes in. Be collaborative. Involve the other people in the room. I said it before, it's a really good opportunity for you to already be collaborative with potential future team. And that leads me to the third tip, which is think out loud. If you're just standing up at a whiteboard and you're silent, no one is going to know what's going on. and They're not going to understand your process at all. Talk about everything that you're doing, everything that's going through your head, why you're making certain decisions. The more you talk, the better. And then tip number four, don't be afraid if they poke holes in your approach. Kind of like the case studies where they ask you a lot of questions and they want you to justify your decisions. There's usually more than one right answer to solving design problems. So don't freak out if they disagree with one of your approaches or they ask you a bunch of prodding questions about why you're doing the things you're doing. Just stay calm, justify your choices, and also take on some feedback from the other people in the room if they're giving it to you. That's gold. Now, if you made it to the fourth round, congratulations. You've done very well. You are in typically the final stages of the product design interview process. Now, this is usually an in-person round, and it's typically some kind of panel format where you'll maybe one by one or all together 
meet a bunch of different people from different teams and to spread across the company. Let me just jump ahead real quick and explain how companies make decisions about hiring people just generally. After the company has interviewed all the candidates in the pool, they'll usually have meetings where they'll stack up all the candidates and rate all of their pros and cons. And that's how they'll make a final decision about who they hire for the job. If there are a few candidates that have gone through the final round, this process is almost never black and white. And there are very small things that might put one or the other candidate just over the line. And that is why it is so important during this final round to let your personality shine through as much as you possibly can. Do your research about who you're gonna be talking to. You're almost certainly gonna know who that is before the day of the interview. So go on their LinkedIn profiles, see if they've done any talks, see if they've made any videos. Anything that you can use is fuel that you can then bring to the table during these interviews and you can ask them questions about it. They're gonna love that you did some research on them and it's just gonna make for much, much richer dialogue between you and the interviewer. Like I said before, this round is usually more a culture fit round. So you're not going to be asked any crazy technical questions anymore. That round is already done, but you'll likely face a bunch of different star questions. And star questions are any questions that are formatted like, tell me about a time where you dot, dot, dot. So you can look up star question prompts on the internet. I'll post a couple in the description below just so you have those, but just prepare for as many of them as you possibly can. You can't really go wrong. And even if you're not asked them, they'll still give you some ammo for bringing up different things during the interview process. The last tip I'll give here is to ask as many questions as you possibly can. And don't be afraid to ask tough questions, especially if you're interviewing for a smaller company like a tech startup. Ask questions like, what are some challenges the company is facing right now? What's the toughest obstacle for the company to overcome in the next six months? Talk to me about something the team isn't doing right now that you wish they were doing. This is also a chance for you to interview them a little bit, and you want to make sure that they've thought about these things and that they actually like and care about the place that they're working at. And that's really it. If you've made it this far, congratulations. I hope you get the job. Let me know how it goes. And also let me know if you want me to do a deep dive on any of the topics that we covered, any of the interview stages that we went over during this video, or if it would be helpful for me to give some answers that maybe I would give to some of the questions that we covered and other questions that we didn't cover in this video. Happy to do a video on those, but let me know if it would be helpful in the comments below. As always, guys, best of luck with this and see you very soon.